Good afternoon. I am Reverend Tracy Blodgick. I am the VP of Communications for Atlantans Building Leadership for Empowerment. We are a faith-based congregation of faith-based organization of congregations, unions, and grassroots organizations. Um, our mission is to develop and empower ordinary people to be the leaders who effect change in their communities for the common good of all. And I welcome you this afternoon on behalf of the American Civil Liberties Union of Georgia and Atlantans Building Leadership for Empowerment. Our organizations have been working together out in our communities and with our legislators. We have been working in response to Georgians who have reported being the targets of racial profiling. And we don't like to talk about it, but we know. We know that if your skin color is darker than mine, or your religion is other than Christian, you are likely to be racially profiled in the state of Georgia by law enforcement. They don't profile me. We are here this afternoon because people in the state of Georgia have had enough. We have called for an end to racial profiling by law enforcement called for an end to the unjust and routine practice of racial profiling on the basis of race, ethnicity, nationality, and religion. Our question is, who is watching the watchers? The legislators you will hear from in a few moments heard our call, and they are responding today with the introduction of anti-racial profiling legislation in the Senate and in the House. Senator Gloria Butler and Representative Pedro Marine are stalwart champions for justice, and we thank them and are grateful to them for hearing and then responding, as always, with their bold leadership. ABLE's commitment is to working for justice for all, and we, our congregations, our unions, and our grassroots organizations fully support this legislation and will do all that we can to ensure that this legislation is passed as law in Georgia. The order of speakers is listed in your agenda. You will hear from our legislators and you will hear from Azadeh Shah Shahani, the National Security and Immigrant Rights Project Director for the ACLU of Georgia. And you will hear personal testimonies from Mark Bell and Reverend Gregory Williams. And we will um, be open to questions after the speakers. So Senator Butler. Good afternoon. As you heard Tracy of Reverend Blodgett said, we must end racial profiling in Georgia. <laughs> racial profiling occurs when law enforcement officers target certain individuals for traffic stops. Law enforcement must end this practice of stopping people based on their race, their perceived race, and their ethnicity. The racial profiling bill that was dropped in this morning with the number Senate Bill 325 will give law enforcement agencies, policymakers, and the public the total necessary tools to identify and address the problem of racial profiling in this state. Someone, uh, some may ask, what is racial profiling? Well, it's when law enforcement stop a targeted group of people for no reason, for no reason. There are four important features to this bill. The first one is to prohibit racial profiling. The second is to require annual training for law enforcement officers regarding racial profiling. The third one is to require law enforcement officers to track the race, the ethnicity, gender, and the approximate age of every person subject to a routine traffic stop. 
The fourth is to require the Attorney General to report to the public on data collected under the new law and to establish procedures to investigate complaints. We think this bill is necessary because it is a pervasive and serious problem. Data from around the country repeatedly shows that people of color are more likely to be stopped and searched by the police, despite the fact that they are less likely to have contraband. Racial profiling is at odds with our shared American values of fairness, justice, and equality under the law. Racial profiling is ineffective and based on false assumptions. Contraband reports show that drivers of color, including African American and Latino drivers, are no more likely and very often less likely to have drugs or weapons in their vehicles. Racial profiling violates the Constitution. Using race, ethnicity, or national origin as a proxy for criminal suspension, suspicion violates the constitutional requirements that police and other government officials afford to all citizens. And that's equal protection under the law. Racial profiling also infringes on the Fourth Amendment guarantee that all people be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. Data collection is the other factor that is important under this, under this bill. I want to call it a law already. <laughs> if you don't collect data and numbers, you have nothing to measure. You have no information to form opinions. So data collection is very important. Oversight and clear policies ensure that stops and arrests are undertaken in a fair manner and provide genuine consequences for individuals and agencies that engage in profiling and undermine public safety. The thing that this bill will not do is add costs to the budget. The data collection and the, the forms that are already used in police departments and law enforcement agencies can be modified to include the data collection that's needed to track racial profiling. I have with me some of my colleagues and another bill that's dropped in the House side by Pedro, Representative Marin. And he will address you at this time. And thank you so much for being here. We must end racial profiling. We must.